My name is Morgan and I'm an SI leader for biochemistry at UF and today I'm going to be talking to you about protein fragmentation analysis. So when scientists want to figure out the primary amino acid sequence of a protein, what they do is they take the protein as a whole and they put it through different treatments which cleave the protein in certain places and produce certain fragments. Then what they do is they look at those fragments that have been produced by each of the treatments and piece together the protein as a whole. So we talked about three types of uh, cleavage mechanisms in class. One was with chymotrypsin, which is an enzyme that cleaves at the carboxy terminal sequence of aromatic amino acids. Two is trypsin, which cleaves at the carboxy terminal sequence of lysine or arginine. And cyanogen bromide, which cleaves at the carboxy terminal sequence of methionine. So chymotrypsin and trypsin are both enzymes, and cyanogen bromide is a chemical compound, but they all produce certain fragments, and they all contribute to this protein cleavage. So I put together a list of general steps for how to piece together your protein. First, what you're going to do is you're going to find the N-terminal sequence that all cleavage methods have in common. And this is going to be the beginning of your peptide. So every peptide starts with an amino terminal sequence and ends in a carboxy terminal sequence. And since there's nothing before the start of your protein, you won't be able to cleave before it. So the sequence that they all have in common, starting with an N-terminus to however many amino acids it reaches before cleavage, is going to be the start of your protein since you can't cleave before that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to find your end. So you're going to find the C-terminal sequence that hasn't experienced cleavage, which is based on the mechanism of whatever your cleaver is. So for example, you're going to look for a C-terminal sequence that uh, doesn't end in an aromatic amino acid for chymotrypsin, because that means it wouldn't have been cleaved, doesn't end in a lysine or arginine for trypsin, and doesn't end in methionine for cyanogen bromide. And this is going to be the end of your peptide. So then you can follow through the segments and piece it all together. So we're going to do an example to kind of walk you through it and you can see how the process is done from start to finish. So step one, you're going to want to find the N-terminal sequence that all the cleavage methods have in common. So if we look here, we notice that for chymotrypsin, trypsin, and cyanogen bromide, we all have this GARW in common. So it's here GARW, it's here GAR, and it's here GAR. So we can assume that since they all share that beginning amino sequence in common, that that is going to be the start of your polypeptide. And what we can do is we can look at the one that has the longest chain and we can follow it through till that. So we're going to say that the start of it is going to be this G A R W A B E M and then your carboxy terminal, okay? Now we're going to look for the end. So now we're going to find the C-terminal sequence that has an experienced cleavage based on each individual cleavage mechanism. So for chymotrypsin, we're going to look at the very end carboxy terminal sequence, which is where this protein has been cleaved. So we're going to look for the amino acid directly to the left of it, which is where it has been cleaved on the carboxy side. And we're going to look for something for chymotrypsin that doesn't end in an aromatic residue because chymotrypsin only cleaves at aromatic residues. So here we have a tryptophan, which is aromatic, so we can assume that this piece isn't the end. We've already known that this is the start piece, but it's easier to just go through and cancel everything out than skip over and maybe miss something. So the tryptophan is out. Then we have a phenylalanine here, which is F, so that's going to be an aromatic acid, amino acid, so it's experience cleavage there, it's safe to say. Then we have a tyrosine, which is also an aromatic. So the only one that we have that doesn't end in an aromatic amino acid is this um, serine residue. So we can assume that this is the end of the peptide since it, hasn't, it can't have experienced cleavage because it's not an aromatic amino acid. So what you can do is if you're unsure, you can go to each of your other mechanisms and just kind of confirm this. So we can look at trypsin's cleavage patterns and we can see that trypsin's cleaves at arginine, which is where it cleaves, um, another arginine. So this serine, again, because it's not an arginine or a lysine, wouldn't have been a cleavage point. So we can, it's safe to say officially now that this is the end of our amino acid um, sequence, our carboxy terminal end, okay? 
And then the lysine here, we can confirm just to check all the fragments that that yes was cleaved because it ends in a lysine. So for cyanogen bromide, we're going to be looking for sequences that don't end in methionine. So we have a methionine here and a methionine here, but we have a serine here. And if you look, all of these sequences match. You have a GDLS in common with each of them. So it's safe to say at this point that this is going to be our end sequence. So our end sequence is going to be this F R G D L S C O O H. And we can leave them open-ended so that you can kind of think that there will be amino acids in between those. And now we're going to piece them together and we're going to figure out the whole sequence. So we're going to start with our amine terminal end and we're going to follow it through. So we have G, A, R, W, A, V, E, M. Okay, so this is the start of our protein. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the fragments that have those certain letters in common and we're going to just follow it through to piece together the rest of it. So what I like to do is I like to take the last five amino acids of whatever sequence we've just written and find them somewhere else in another fragment. So I'm going to look for a W-A-V-E-M, okay? So if you look in your fragments, you can find one right here in trypsin. So you have W-A-V-E-M. And then where that M stops, you can continue down here. So next we have L, G, Q, H, and K. Okay? Now we've reached another stop point. So we're going to find another uh, fragment that has L, G, Q, H, K in it. So we're going to look and we're going to see... We have one right here, so L, G, Q, H, K, and then we're going to continue. So we have Y, D, C, M. All right, again, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to find one that has a K, Y, D, C, M, and then continue. So if you look, Right here we have a YDCM, so that's pretty close. We only have four of the amino acids, but four is okay. Um, no less than three, because you could just have a coincidence that you have two of the same sequences um, that are just three polypeptide or three amino acids long. So we found right here, so we have YDCM, and then we have FR. Okay, and so now we want to look for a DCM. FR if we have one. Um, okay, so we have an YDCMFR here, and we have a YDCM here. So we can assume, since we only have two, um, that this is going to be where we pick off at, because if you look, there's no other FR sequences that aren't right next to a DCM. So we can assume that this is going to be that last part. So we have F, R, G, D, L, S. H. All right, so this right here that we've just pieced together is the primary sequence of our polypeptide chain, okay? So what you can do to double check yourself is you can go ahead and look at this part where you've written out what the start and end sequences should be, and you can just make sure that they're right. So you can look at the um, amine terminal end, and you can see that we have this sequence there. And if you look at the end terminal, you can see that we have this sequence here. So at this point, we've pieced together our polypeptide, and we now can know the primary sequence. So it's really simple. If you just follow these steps, you'll never get it wrong. I hope you found this video helpful, and good luck studying. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.